Hello and welcome back to Principles of Macroeconomics. I'm your host, Dr. B. Uh, we are in week seven. <laughs> Unbelievable. I, you know, it's the time goes by so very quickly. Uh, we're already in October 2021, uh, week seven. We're going to be talking about uh, GDP, gross domestic product, which is uh, how we measure the income of a nation. Uh, before we jump into the, today's conversation, I want to point out a couple of uh, things in our classroom. So we're in week seven, so module two, week seven. <clears throat> Today, uh, we're going to be talking about GDP, gross domestic product. So for this week, we have a discussion board. The discussion board is on gross domestic product. A couple of questions you'll need to answer. Uh, as you're answering the questions, uh, I want you to be very conscious of how you're answering the questions. Um, yes, of course, use the textbook. Yes, of course, use the PowerPoint. Yes, of course, use external resources. Uh, all of those things uh, will definitely help you to answer these questions. I, I want to um, also cue uh, you in on discussion boards. As you know, uh, every discussion board is worth 5% uh, of your total grade, right? So it is very important that you are actively participating in all of the discussion boards in this course and all your other courses. Um, and that's just because it's worth 5% of your grade, which is half a letter grade, by the way. But it also um, furthers the discussion, right? That's what a discussion board, the intention is. So as you're going through your discussion board, uh, please make sure that you're using full paragraphs, citations, references, and, and of course, a discussion means a conversation between two or more people, right? I mean, isn't that kind of what a discussion is? So <laughs> as you're going through your discussion boards, please, 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 please respond to two or more of your classmates using full paragraph responses. Uh, and... If you do those things, if full paragraph initial post, full paragraph response to two or more classmates with citations and references for all of the above, that will for sure help you to earn full credit. So uh, that is the gross domestic product discussion. It is due this Sunday night. Uh, I would like you to please start that early because it's difficult to respond to classmates if no one posted. <laughs> Right, so try to have your initial uh, posts completed by Thursday night, uh, because that will allow time for you to respond to two or more of your classmates. So that's week seven. Uh, last last week, uh, I, I unfortunately had a couple of meetings I do I could not get out of. Right, so I I, I did post the pre-recorded videos for last week in the announcements. Uh, they were also sent to your email. Please make sure you view those if you haven't already. And then, of course, you had a week eight quiz, I'm sorry, chapter eight quiz, chapter nine homework that were due yesterday. So if you have not completed those, they are late. Uh, the rule is we're not supposed to be accepting late work in this course. Some of you are a little behind. So um, if you want to pass this course, you kind of need to do the work. And that's kind of on you, right? Um, that's what it's all about. So my recommendation, if you want to pass the course, submit the work. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'll say on that. Uh, next week, what's going on? Oh, da, 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 da. The midterm exam is next week. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, week eight midterm week uh, here at the university. So what does that mean for next week? Well, there is not going to be a lecture for this course. Uh, next week, you have to complete your midterm exam. The midterm exam, uh, yeah, it's the midterm exam. So that can only be taken once. Uh, you'll need to take your time on it. It's open book, open note. There is no timer, so you don't have to worry about a, a, being it timed, right? I don't like timers. It gives me anxiety. And I know that it's the same for most of you, so I, I feel you on that. So the midterm exam It'll cover uh, chapters 1 through 10, 1 through 10 covered on the midterm exam. Uh, that is going to be next week, okay? Uh, it'll be due on the 17th. That one, I cannot accept late, cannot accept late. 
Okay, because why? Because I need to tell the university your midterm exam scores on the 18th, right? And if you're failing, that's going to be very problematic for you and for the university, right? So um, we want to make sure that you're on the up and up. So if you have any late work, that needs to be submitted like now. Yeah. Uh, why? Because it's going to help your overall midterm score. And then, of course, you'll have your midterm exam. Any questions on that? Anything at all? It's pretty clear, right? Okay. All right. So uh, I'll get off my soapbox and we'll get started. GDP, gross domestic product. The gross domestic product is a measurement. And that measurement tells us the wealth of a nation. Gross domestic product. It tells us the output. It's a measure of output. It's a measure of production. And what is production? What is output? What does it mean? Well, it, we're producing products and services and we're selling those products and services. And that is revenue. And revenue is sales. Uh, you all, of course, know that from your intro to business course. And for those of you who have taken accounting so far, you know what that is. But the idea behind it is we're looking at it from the perspective of the entire nation, right? The entire country. And what this does is it helps the country to better understand where they're positioned in the world with respect to buying power, with respect to um, earnings power, with respect to uh, power in general, right? Uh, the wealthier a nation is, the better off the nation is said to be because uh, the people within that country are benefiting. And uh, yeah, we'll, and we'll talk all about those things. So gross domestic product, uh, Looking at gross domestic product, we look at it as how, how much uh, the country is making in terms of revenue. Revenue is, in business, revenue is how much we sold, right? That's, uh, that's in terms of dollars, how much we sold, right? The total sales, that's revenue. And revenue uh, is what, the, what is coming in. That's, those are funds coming in to the, to the company. In this case, the country, right, is it's the income. Uh, and we're going to look at GDP as a reflection of the total money coming in from the revenue sales and how much we're spending the money going out. Uh, and that's that's a true reflection of the country as a whole, right? And, and we'll talk about how to measure GDP, how to calculate it, and what it all means. We'll talk about what are the different components of GDP. How is it correlated with inflation, which is uh, a very current topic, right? We're experiencing inflation right now, and it's uh, getting a little out of control. And we'll talk about that in, it will, in a real-world comparison. And uh, we'll also look at how GDP is a measure of the society's well-being. You know, how, how healthy is the country? How are people feeling about, about the country's wealth? So to better understand gross domestic product, we first need to understand economics in a general sense. And we've been talking about this for the past six weeks, is uh, microeconomics, macroeconomics. Uh, obviously, this is macroeconomics. That's the name of our course, and it's the study of an economy-wide phenomenon. We're looking at the country as a whole in this course, We're looking at it from the perspectives of in inflation, unemployment, economic growth, so forth and so on, from a whole country perspective, right? That's what macroeconomics means. The word macro stems from the Greek word <clears throat> meaning open space, large, the whole picture, macro, macro. And that's, uh, uh, that's macroeconomics, the whole picture. Microeconomics 
is individual households and firms. Might think of the word micro, uh, minuscule, um, uh, small. It's, it's a part of the picture, part of the picture. And that part of the picture is where decisions are made and there's interactions with the markets. So micro is the small part of the picture, or think of it like a puzzle piece, right? And then macroeconomics is the whole puzzle or the whole picture. When we look at macroeconomics, we look at this thing called gross domestic product. That's how we measure how well the overall economy is doing. It's a measure of income uh, for, for everyone within the economy. So that's why it's important to understand micro and macro. Right? When we look at microeconomics, we're looking at the individual households, the individual firms, and companies. Macroeconomics is the whole country. Well, I, I know it's hard to believe, but if you look at the sum of everyone in the microeconomy, meaning all add up all the businesses, add up all the people, that equals the macro component, right? So, you know, because as I said earlier, think of micro as a puzzle piece. Macro as the whole puzzle. If you add up all the puzzle pieces, you get to the whole puzzle, right? And so from that perspective, we can have a better understanding of the whole economy. It's the total income of everyone in the economy is gross domestic product. So if I add up the total of all the puzzle pieces, I can get the total income of the whole economy. And of course, it also measures how much the total economy is spending in terms of output of goods and services. There's this concept called equilibrium, and we talked a lot about equilibrium earlier on. It's where your demand equals your supply. And there's a point where the gross domestic product also has kind of an equilibrium. It's where your income equals your expenses. And that's done for the economy as a whole. Because every dollar a buyer spends is a dollar income for the seller. What does that mean? Now, the dollar comes in, the dollar goes out. That's how the economy works, right? If you earn a dollar from your job, you're going to spend that dollar in one way, shape, or form, whether it's on a bit, on a uh, an expense, a bill, or if it's something that you're going to buy, or if it's something that you're going to invest in, or if, whatever, right? The dollar's going to do something, <laughs> You know, every dollar has an assignment. And so that, that's why we say income will always equal your expenses at some point. And thinking about how the economy works, uh, we look at this thing called a circular flow diagram. It shows the money coming in, the money going out, the money coming in, the money going out. Uh, and... Uh, and how all of those things influence the economy as a whole. They influence uh, gross domestic product. And in that circular flow diagram, we look at a couple of elements that involve things like the, the inputs and the outputs. The inputs, what goes into uh, production, right? Uh, for those of you who have had me for accounting 220, um, we think of the inputs as our, the company's uh, assets. You know, these are the inputs. What goes into the company from from our um, from our equity, uh, our, our owners of the company. What goes in? What goes into the business, right, to help the business to earn money? Those are our inputs. That would be labor, land, capital, natural resources, property, plant, and equipment. Right. These are these are the long lived assets. Think of it from a whole country perspective, labor, land, capital, natural resources. All of these are assets to the country. And these assets are our inputs for production. We use all of these things to produce goods and services. 
We use people. We use uh, land. We use dollars, which is capital. We use natural resources, all to create goods and services. Those are our inputs. Uh, and then what are the outputs, right? They're payments for these factors of production, like wages, rent, uh, the cost of acquiring capital through interest, um, the cost of acquisition for natural resources. All of these uh, that, you know, there's cost associated with all the inputs. So the, the outputs would be the, the cost of those inputs. So in looking at this circular flow diagram, oh, sorry. <laughs> we have firms and we have houses, firms and houses. So think of it this way. Uh, the people, they live in houses and they work at the firms, right? Or they buy from the firms or they work at the firms. <laughs> the people live in the houses and they work in the firms. They also buy stuff from the firms. They also uh, consume stuff from the firms, right? And the firms, they employ people from the households. They sell goods and services to people in the households, right? That, that's the idea behind it, that there's an exchange, right, of goods and services here. From the firms, they are buying, they're hiring people all for producing goods and services, right? And then they sell those goods and services to the households. And then, then the households, they uh, sell and rent to the firms for income. In other words, they're working for these companies to generate income for the household. And they uh, are also buying and consuming goods and services from the firms, which makes it a circular flow diagram, right? We can see the, uh, the exchange. We see that from coming out of the household into the firm through the market, we got labor, land, capital. These are the individuals living in houses that are bringing in their resources into the marketplace. Uh, for production, and those factors are going into the firms, the companies, right? And then the company, they pay you in the form of wages. They uh, also pay rent and they make a profit. And the wages the company makes, the rent the company's paying, uh, and the profit the company earns, we call this gross domestic product. And the wages get paid to the people in the households. Makes sense, because those are the people working for the firm. And those wages are considered to be a factor of production and it becomes income for the household, right? The wage, the wage is income, ultimately, for the household. And that household income is also considered to be gross domestic product. So in looking at this circular flow diagram, we the, for the companies, the wages paid, the rent paid, uh, the profit earned is gross domestic product. The income earned by the household is also gross domestic product. And uh, But there's another side, right? The household spends money Right, they got to spend money, which is part of gross domestic product. That money that the household spends on goods and services is revenue for the firm, right? It's the input for the firm in terms of revenue. And yes, you know, so there's more. The firm sells goods and services through the marketplace that are ultimately goods and services bought by the household. So that's why we call it a circular flow diagram. You see how it flows in both directions. The people who live in houses contribute their land, labor, 
uh, and investments into uh, the market, which ultimately become a factor of production for the company. The company sells goods and services through the market that are bought by the people living in the houses. Uh, and so we see this cycle, right? That the people who work for the firm get paid by the firm. The people who work for the firm buy goods and services sold by the firm. Uh, and it's, it's cyclical, right? But we can see that the company's revenue is a part of GDP. The company's profit is a part of GDP. The income earned by the households, part of GDP. And the spending by the households, also part of GDP. Uh, so gross domestic product represents the production of goods and services um, and the flow of goods and services and the uh, revenue expenses by both the households and the companies. And so ultimately, um, all of those things together make up gross domestic product. And we'll, you know, we'll talk about the formula and things like that, but uh, that's the kind of the basic principle, right? It's you live in a house, you work for a company. When you work for that company, that company is going to pay you, right? Uh, hopefully. And uh, when the company pays you, you spend that money on buying goods and services, right? And so that's the cyclical flow. That's how the economy works is the flow of money coming in and going out. Uh, and that's, that's the, the concept of it. What the gov what the government what the diagram doesn't show you, it includes it, but it it doesn't include it in the diagram. Uh, is the government? The government collects taxes. What, so every time you buy and sell, there's taxes. You buy something, you pay sales tax. You sell something, you pay sales tax. <laughs> right. Um, you buy something, sales tax, sell something, sales tax. Uh, the company sells you something. They got to pay tax. They got to pay wages. They got to, you know, taxes on the wages, so forth and so on. Every time the government collects taxes for whatever reason, whether that's wage tax, unemployment tax, uh, um, whatever tax, sales tax, that's revenue. That's revenue for the government. Okay. That's how the government works. The, the government uses tax money to fund government operations and services. Okay. They take your tax dollar and then they use it for something. Let's say you earn a dollar and you got to pay 30 cents on every dollar in taxes. They'll take that 30 cents on every dollar and they'll put it toward various expenses like rebuilding bridges, uh, paving roads, building schools, whatever, right? The list goes on and on. That's the way it works. Well, that's the way it mostly works. <laughs> U.S. is a little special sometimes, but that's the way it mostly works. So that's the way the government works anyway. That's how, that's how it operates. And so, well, that's how it should operate, in my opinion. Uh, so, it does that, that diagram doesn't include taxes. So, it doesn't include the government from that perspective. It also does not include uh, how financial systems work. Uh, in other words, it doesn't include banks. That diagram doesn't include money that's borrowed for the production of goods and services. Because we know that when money is borrowed, there needs to be this thing called interest and principal paid back to the bank. Uh, so that diagram doesn't show that either. And the other thing it doesn't show is the foreign sector. Gross domestic product is driven by and for the country. And it doesn't include the interaction with other countries. 
for example, the trade of goods and services, uh, the financial assets and currencies that other countries have, right? So it doesn't show like that exchange between other countries. Because gross domestic product, it's, it's in the title, right? Domestic. Domestic means within the country. So gross domestic product is the gross production of products and services within the country. So it represents the market value of the final goods and services produced within the country. Market value. Now tell me, what is market value? What does that mean? Who wants to try? That would, yeah, that would exclude exports. That's right. Because it's domestic, domestic only. What is market value? Like the price of whatever the item is being sold on? Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer, Dario. I like that. The price of what it's being sold at. Yeah, that's a good example of market value. It's, uh, yeah, it's 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 that. It's It's kind of like the value you put on it. What you think it's worth. It's what, what you and the company think it's worth. That's market value. And that price that you mentioned represents the sales price, which when it's at market value, it's neither under value or over value. It's, it's at that exchange price. And I could sell that product uh, at that price anywhere. That's market value, right? I, I think we talked about that uh, maybe two weeks ago, I want to say, something like that. Yeah, that's a great example. And so uh, they're valued at the market. So all the product produced that are the same are sold at the same price. <clears throat> Things that don't have a market value would include things like the work that you do for yourself. <laughs> There's no, you can't put a market value on that work, right? Uh, because the work that we do for ourselves within the house sold are unique. Uh, there's not a market value for something like that, right? You know, it's because, because the work that we do individually uh, for ourselves, we there, we can't put a market value on that. Like for example, if I change a light bulb at my house and Dario changes the light bulb at his house, um, you know, we might have different hourly rates. We might have bought different light bulbs. We might have done something differently, different technique, whatever. So therefore, the the market value can't be the same. And uh, we can also say the gross domestic product in the market value is the uh, for all the goods and services produced within the country at, if, at a given point in time. So what, the word all, the word all, final goods. <clears throat> we know that there are a lot of different products out there. Tons, tons and millions, billions, trillions probably of different products that are made in the United States, that uh, are sold within the United States. It, uh, the gross domestic product represents all of that, the total of all final goods and services produced in the country. Uh, so we would add up product A plus product B plus product C, you know. And, you know, it's price times quantity, price times quantity, price times quantity, you add up all those totals. That's your gross domestic product in terms of revenue, anyway. So GDP includes all the items produced in the economy that are, I got to include this, that are sold legally in the marketplace. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Stop burning those CDs. <laughs> Stop going on those peer to peer sharing websites and downloading that music. I can't measure that in GDP, right? Um, so it's got to be bought and sold legally, 
in order for it to be measured uh, within GDP. The gross domestic product uh, excludes most items produced uh, and sold that are illegal. I, I can't include illegal items in my gross domestic product because it'll throw off that calculation and because it's not fair for me to include something that's illegal in my gross domestic product, especially when I'm comparing our country to other ones, right? Uh, so there's certain standards that they have to, they have to use. Uh, you, you know, it's, and it's a great area too, because, uh, when something's illegal now, doesn't mean it will be illegal in the future. Right. So when, when we transition to phases where things become legal again at some point and we're able to sell it legally on, on a, uh, on a market then we can include it in the GDP. And the GDP, when that happens, you'll see that the GDP will spike uh, for that year, right? And then it'll level off, but it, it's, it's just an interesting concept. The market value of all uh, final goods and services produced within a country at a given time, you know, we keep repeating the same definition, right? But we're breaking down what, what each word means individually. Final goods. When something is final, that means that it's done, right? It is it is the end result. It is the finished good. We call it, in accounting, we'll call that the finished good, right? That's the product that uh, we, we finished our manufacturing on and we're selling it. And that finished good is what is sold to the what we call the end user or the pers person purchase, purchasing that finished good. Another concept is called intermediate goods. Intermediate goods. It's uh, components or ingredients in the production process. Think of it as work in process. For those of you uh, who have had, had me for accounting before, you know that there are three different types of inventory. There's raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. Raw materials are um, raw materials. So it's wood, it's uh, metal, you know, wood, sheet metal, string. You know, it's they're raw materials. They get those are the parts that go through the assembly process to become a finished good, right? So the raw, you have raw materials which could be considered an intermediate good because they're parts that go into the production to create a finished good. And then you also have work in process. Work in process is where the individual employees are assembling the raw materials into a finished good. They're assembling, they're, they're cutting, they're they're molding, you know, they're creating a finished good. It's work in process. It comes out of work in process when the good is complete. And so work in process and raw materials, we, those are both a part of the intermediate goods. They, they're what goes into, they're the inputs for the finished good. When it comes to gross domestic product, we only include the final goods, the finished goods, because they represent the value of all of the intermediate goods used in production, in other words. Uh, and, and I've mentioned this before, and I'll, I'll, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in this class, but I know I've said it in accounting is, the total cost of a finished good is your materials, your direct materials, plus your direct labor, plus your factory overhead. Direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead are the costs that go into making a finished good. Your direct materials, that's your raw materials. 
your, your direct labor, that's your work in process. Those are people actually making the products. And then your factory overhead, those are things like your electricity, your rent, your salaries, et cetera, that are related to the manufacturing that product. So direct materials, direct labor, finished good, uh, factory overhead are what make your total cost of your finished good. And so that's why we say that uh, gross domestic product can only include finished goods because the direct materials, direct labor, factory overhead, which equal finished good, represent the total of the um, stages of production. Goods and services. Goods are tangible goods. Uh, tangible goods, anything that you can physically touch, that you can physically buy. Those are tangible things you could touch. Yeah. Tangible means physically touch it. You can buy it. You can hold it. You can put it in your hand. You can consume it. You know, drinking water, bottled water, uh, soda. Mountain bikes, DVDs, uh, television sets, computers, um, the cell phone itself, right? Those are all tangible products. Then you have intangible, which are services. The, the word intangible means you cannot physically touch it. An example of that, dry cleaning can't physically touch a dry clean. I can't physically touch a concert. You can. You'll probably get th thrown in jail, but don't do that. You can't physically touch a concert. You can't physically touch cell phone service. <laughs> you can't physically touch lawn service. Right? If you can't physically touch it and it's a service, we call it an intangible service. I can't physically touch accounting services. I can't physically touch legal services. They're services, right? Uh, so intangible service. Tangible goods and intangible services represent goods and services produced within the country at a given time. Produced. Produced, those are the inputs, right? Gross domestic product includes currently produced goods uh, and not go goods produced in the past. What does that mean? Currently produced goods. Goods I've created this year. Current. Uh, the word current means within 12 months, right? So current, meaning within this fiscal year, uh, I produced it within this fiscal year. That's current. Currently produced goods. Past goods are goods that I made in the prior fiscal year. Within a country. Within the country's borders. In the United States. It doesn't matter who, who did it, right? It could be someone who lives outside the United States but is working in the United States. Or, you know, or it could be an immigrant. Uh, it could be undocumented, documented. It could be a citizen, non-citizen. doesn't matter who did it. It matters where it was done. Within a country. Within the borders of the country. And, of course, during a particular time. 12 months. Sometimes a quarter, you know, we, we also measure gross domestic product in quarters. A quarter is every three months, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, four quarters in a year, uh, twelve months. And it's and it's usually a fiscal year. It's usually a fiscal year. So um, as as most of you probably know, if you don't know, you you'll know now. The government, U.S. government, fiscal year starts October one. So a couple days ago, fiscal year 2022 started. Uh, fiscal year 2022 will end September 30. Yep. 
So October 1 to September 30 is the fiscal year of the government. Fiscal years, um, in most cases, different than the full calendar year. Calendar year is January to December. Fiscal year could be any 12 months set by that company. In our case, the government just selected October 1 to September 30 for their fiscal year. And no, I don't know why that was. So don't, don't ask that question. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's look at each component of GDP. <clears throat> so gross domestic product is representative of all the inputs minus all the outputs, right? The outputs, but it's a spending. Spending. So... Gross domestic product is represented by total spending. We look at total con uh, spending and these four components. Consumption, investment, government purchases, net exports. Okay, let's look at each one. Consumption. Consumption is within... Consumption is within, so when, when we consume, we are utilizing those inputs. Investment. Investment is when we're using our assets to invest in other purposes. An example would be uh, the U.S. dollar invested in um, uh, Japanese yen uh, by some amount. Okay, that's an investment by, strategy by the, by the government. Government purchases. The government purchases various things, assets, to be used for whatever reason. Examples of that could be land in other countries. Uh, examples of purchases could be um, machinery, uh, for various reasons or other assets, buildings, property, plant, equipment, whatever, whatever. Land goes on. The, the list goes on. And then we have net exports. Exports, as you recall, are products that we produce in the country and have sold abroad to other countries. Exports. That's what exports. A net export is imports minus exports, right? We'll, we'll break it down a little bit further. So consumption, total spending by the households on goods and services, consumption. We're consuming within. We're using within. We're, we're consuming it. We're, we're using the goods and services inside the country. Okay. Uh, housing costs includes rent payments. Consumption includes run payments. Consumption includes rental value for the house. Consumption includes the purchase, or does not include the purchase of new housing. So when you think of consumption, think of it from the perspective of monthly expenses. Okay, monthly expenses. Consumption. Monthly expenses. Investment. Investment is the total spending on the goods that will be used in the future to produce more goods. <laughs> right? Investment. When you hear the word investment, you think of future use. Future use. If I invest a dollar today into like... Um, a CD, Certificate of Deposit, or I, I invest a dollar today into the stock market. I expect to generate additional revenue from that investment, right? From that investment, I expect to get more out of it. If I put a dollar into a bank account that has a interest rate on it, I expect to be able to pull that dollar plus the interest now. It's an investment. I'm going to use that money for, in the future, okay? 
businesses invest in property, plant, and equipment. These are fixed assets. These fixed assets, property, plant, and equipment, business invests in property, plant, and equipment with the ex expectation that they will use that property, plant, and equipment in the future to help them to generate revenue. Right? I'm going to the company. The country. The company, of course, is going to use their property, plant, and equipment to help them to generate sales. That's the whole idea behind an investment: is that you invest into something to help you to generate revenue. That's what businesses do. From a residential perspective, landlords, apartment buildings. A homeowner's personal residence. These are investments. Okay. Why? You purchase land. You purchase property with the expectation that the value of that property will increase over time. That is very true, especially here in D.C. You all know that. Okay. That's why you, it's like. You're not going to ever see the price of that house that you really want to buy. It ain't going to go down. I promise you it won't. It might a little bit. But it will not go down over time. All right? Why is that? Because the value of the land the, prop the building sits on, the value of land continues to increase regardless of what happens. You can burn that building to the ground and that land will still be valuable. Okay. It's the land. So when you go to buy your next property, my recommendation, try to find a single family house or a townhouse. Why? The land. The land the building is on holds its value for much longer than the actual building itself. Because the building itself will depreciate over time. This is my advice to you all when you go to buy your next house. It's an investment into the future. Okay. Inventory. Inventory are good are products, goods, finished goods that have been produced by the company but have not yet been sold. That's called inventory. Uh, yeah, that's inventory. Nice and easy. There's a, there's a couple forms of inventory. There's raw materials, work in process, finished goods. Finished goods are the goods that have been produced and not yet sold. That's called inventory. Uh, yeah, also important to note, investment does not mean the purchase of financial assets like stocks and bonds. Those aren't real investments. What do I mean by that? Uh, if you put a dollar in the stock market yesterday, that dollar is probably gone or close to gone. Why is that? The stock market plummeted today. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, stocks and bonds. There's a lot of inherent risk with stocks and bonds. Inherent risk means you can lose your up to your investment. Okay? So like let's say you put a couple dollars into the stock market yesterday, today the stock market collapsed. You may have lost that initial investment. That's why uh stocks and bonds when you invest in the stock and stocks and bonds, the purchase of that is is um is a different type of investment. The reason for that is because you don't expect to pull out what you put in when it comes to stocks and bonds. It's it's just different from that perspective. There's no there's no real value behind the stocks and the bonds. It's just dollars, right? So um, there's no tangible component. It's not like a building. It's not like land. It's not like equipment. It's not like inventory. Stocks and bonds are, are, are non-tangible, intangible. G, government purchases. When the government makes purchases, they're spending 
on goods and services. And those goods and services are at the federal, state, and local levels. Uh, what does the government spend on goods and services? You might you might be wondering. Uh, they they um, purchase property, plant, and equipment at all those levels. They uh, build roads, schools, infrastructure. Government's spending money on those things, right? Uh, that's what they're spending money on, and other various things. They spend they spend a lot of money. <laughs> Too much money, in my opinion. Uh, this does not include what we call transfer payments. Transfer payments is when the government pays you Social Security or unemployment insurance. Uh, Social Security and unemployment insurance benefits, uh, they that is not government spending. That it, Well, it technically is, but it's not because it was already paid into by you, you and your employer, okay? So we call those transfer payments, and that, that's not a form of purchasing because there's the government's not purchasing Social Security or unemployment. They're providing it, and those types of payments that the government makes toward those things, they're not making it on the government's behalf because you already paid into it and your employer already paid into it. So think of it like a – think of Social Security and unemployment insurance like a – Bank accounts that the government set up for you, and you're required to invest into it or pay into it. Exports. As I mentioned earlier, exports is uh, when we, the country, are producing goods and services and selling those goods and services to other countries. That's an export. Example of that would be soybeans. Here in the United States, we are really good at making soybeans. Okay. And these soybeans, we're so good at it, and we have really good soil. That's why we're good at this it. soil. Uh, the soybeans we sell to other countries because we have so much of it. We got a ton of it. We got, and we could do it really cheaply. And so we sell it. That's an export. We also import things. We import a lot of stuff, actually. And uh, this is a part of consumption. Imports are a part of consumption, uh, investment, and um, government spend. Uh, based off of the goods and services that we purchase from other countries. So net export is your exports minus your imports. That equals your net export. Exports minus imports. Exports minus imports. That's your net export. So to uh, calculate the gross domestic product, we take consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports to get us the gross domestic product. So let's use an example. <laughs> okay. Consumption. Uh, in 2015, the United States consumed uh, $12.272 billion, uh, which is 68.4% of the total gross domestic product. Total gross domestic product for the year was 17.947. How do we find the percentage of gross domestic product, you might be asking, right? We take the, uh, here, let me see if I can get my fancy little pen gizmo here. We take, hopefully you can all see this. Uh, we take the total Uh, okay, good. You take your total gross domestic product, in this example, 17.947, divided by your consumption, 
equals 68.4%. Okay. And then you do the same thing for everything else. So um, we take our investment 3.021 uh, divided by our Y. Right, divided by our y, which is 17.947, equals 16.8%. For our government spending, 3.183 divided by our y, seventeen point nine four seven equals 17.7. Uh, and then the same for net exports. And that's, what, how, that's how you calculate the percentage of gross domestic product. The, the gross domestic product, of course, is going to be 100%, right? So you take your uh, dollar amount divided by total gross domestic product dollar amount divided by total gross domestic product, so forth and so on. That gets you your percentages. Now, what about per capita? Per capita simply means uh, per... 100,000 individuals or per, you know, whatever whatever the specification is, per number of capital, uh, capit, capita, capita. Capita, the word capita means the number of individuals uh, in the country, right? And it, and it could be out of 100,000, out of a million, out of whatever, right? Whatever, whatever the base is. But in this example, per capita, uh, out of the total 100% gross domestic product, 55.426 uh, billion. Uh, and to find the per capita, it's just simply taking uh, the per, total per capita times that percentage that you found earlier equals your uh, per capita for each um, each item. Does that make sense? Everyone kind of gets my football diagram here. Y'all doing all right? Okay, you're all still you're all still awake. Are you uh, you know out to out to dinner? Hopefully you got me like on the big screen TV at home, and you're like, oh man, look at this guy. <laughs> all right, just making sure you're all still with me now. I did one time. <laughs> hey man, I, you know I can't I can't fault you for that. Now you already know. I I, I do the same thing. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's look at a couple of different examples. All right, uh, let's determine the GDP for each component. Uh, this individual, Debbie. Spends three hundred dollars to buy her husband dinner. Well, oh, man, that's a nice dinner. I, I mean, I kind of want that. So Debbie spent three hundred bucks at dinner. That's nice. Sarah bought a new laptop for twelve hundred bucks. Okay. Jane spent eight hundred bucks on a computer. Great. General Motors builds five hundred million worth of something. Cars, but but the consumers only want to buy for 170 million worth. Well, that makes sense because that's General Motors. Uh, let's. So Debbie spent 300 bucks to buy dinner. That's cute. So C consumption. Remember, C consumption is the spending within the country by individuals. So C uh, consumption. Increased by 300 for letter A. Letter B. Sarah spent 1200 bucks on a laptop. The laptop is from China. Okay. Just like everything else, right? So the laptop that was made in China uh, would be investment increases by 1200 
and net export falls by 1,200. The GDP is unchanged. Let's think about that for a second now. So if we grab our annotation. Uh, actually, no, let's not grab our annotation. Let's... Um, all right, what I do, I broke it. Go away. I close it. Okay. Uh, so let's think about that one for a second. Y equals C plus I plus G plus NX. If we look at how why it's unchanged, if our investment increased by 1,200, because remember, it's investing into our business. When you invest in a business... It's an invest or when you purchase for a business, it's an investment, right? Purchasing property, plant, and equipment. So it's an investment. Investment increases by 1200. Net export falls by 1200. Why net export fall by 1200? Net export is exports minus imports. It was imported by 1200 bucks. So that means net export fell by $1,200. Exports minus imports, so negative 1,200 on that part of the equation, plus 1,200 on investment, which equals zero for our gross domestic product. Chain bottle computer, 800 bucks for a home editing business. She got last year's model. Uh, the term here is last year. Last year's model doesn't count toward this year's gross domestic product. Remember, gross domestic product only accounts for the production from that fiscal year. So, if I produce something in September... This past September, I cannot count it toward fiscal year 2022. Fiscal year 2022 started this month in October. So if I made it in September and I sell it in October, it doesn't count. Because if the fiscal year ends in September and the new one starts in October, if I made it in September, I need to have had sold it in September for it to count for last year's GDP number. But since I didn't sell it until later on, it doesn't count. Because remember, with GDP, it needs to be produced and sold in that same fiscal year. Letter D, General Motors. Builds $500 million worth of cars. They sell $470 million of them. Consumption increased by four hundred seventy. million. Remember, consumption is the uh, purchase uh, within the country, used within the country. Inventory investment rose by $30 million, and the GDP rises by $500 million. Now let's think about it. Consumption increased 470. So there's one part. Investment increased by 30. There's the other part. Total GDP change, 500 million. Remember, it's consumption plus investment plus government spending plus uh, net exports. Plus, 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 plus. Total GDP change, 500 million. Normal GDP. What is real? What's normal? What's the difference? No. Oh, not normal. Nominal, sorry. Nominal GDP. These are values output rise using current prices. Not correlated or cor correct. Correlated. Corrected for inflation. <sighs> okay. Think of it this way. Uh the values of output for the current prices. So let's say I, um, 
let's here let's give an example here can i use i'll put using current prices um let's say i sell a pack of uh toilet paper for three dollars okay three dollars for a pack that's a good deal so uh i sell it for three dollars a pack that's nominal that's nominal yeah it's the value using the current price current price is three dollars i made it i'm selling it for three dollars current price three dollars that's nominal the inflation percentage right now is well it's ridiculous it's like close to eight percent so if we currently have eight percent inflation and i sell a pack of toilet paper for three dollars the inflation goes up it doesn't get corrected okay it's still three dollars so there's there's no change in the gross domestic product because of inflation that's nominal think of nominal as like a baseline you know it's it's the uh, it's the the benchmark yeah nominal then we have real GDP the real GDP follows inflation so the value is adjusted using the prices for the ba that basis year and is adjusted for inflation so real GDP follows inflation nominal does not to find the base year in order to calculate the real GDP we take the nominal GDP equals the real GDP nominal equals the real real case scenario uh, yeah I would raise the price uh, why because I'm not going to take a hit on my profit margin because inflation's going up what happens when inflation rises the price of everything goes up you're seeing that now in the grocery store I know you are you're seeing it now at the gas pump you're seeing it now at the grocery store you're seeing it now everywhere pretty much price of everything's gone up why is that it's not like our raw materials increased our we didn't increase our labor we didn't increase our raw materials we didn't increase our overhead why did the price of everything rise the value of the dollar decreased okay due to inflation inflation happens when there's too much currency in the system too much currency in the system there's too much money in the system that causes inflation that causes the value of the dollar to decrease and when that happens the price of everything rises which is what we're seeing now oh I love this example who doesn't like a good latte oh and pizza who doesn't love pizza it's a great question okay we got two different products we got pizza we got lattes we got pizza we got lattes okay earlier I had said that gross domestic product accounts for all products all products it doesn't matter if it's pizza product doesn't matter if it's a latte product it's a product it is a product so let's compute the nominal GDP for each year remember nominal GDP is reflective of the uh, gross domestic product for that uh, respective year so 2014 we got pizza we got latte pizzas ten dollars a piece or ten well, hopefully not a piece hopefully for a whole pizza ten dollars a pizza 400 pizzas so remember price times quantity gives you your uh, total revenue so price times quantity total revenue for pizza price times quantity total revenue for lattes looking at uh, 10 times 400 plus two times a thousand giving us 6,000 uh, total revenue for 2014 which is equivalent to the total nominal GDP for that year now we we'll do the same thing for 2015 2016 price times quantity plus price times quantity for the next product uh, 2015 8,250 2016 10,800 we see what's happening with price the prices are increasing okay the interesting thing is the quantities are also increasing 
uh, there's well, they're staying rel relative to the increment changes, right? So, how do we find um, the incremental changes? We compute the percentage change from year to year. How do we do that? Well, we take uh, the base. Uh, I call it. I call it new minus old divided by old. So the new year, 2015, minus the old year, 2014, divided by the old year, 2014, that gives me my percent change. So 8,250 minus 6,000 divided by 6,000 equals 37.5%. Well, you got to multiply by 100, of course. Uh, to get the percentage, that's right. And then we do the same thing for 2016, 2015. New minus old divided by old, 30.9%. Why is the percent increase important to understand from year to year? Because it helps us to understand the uh, inflation rate. And the production rate, I guess. Uh, okay. So, yeah, 2014 would be the base, which is basically what I just explained for the percent uh, changes. <clears throat> so, let's take a look. If, if I use 2014 as my base, I could actually uh, do the comparison for uh, every year for the three years. So, 2014, price times quantity plus price times quantity. Six, equals 6,000. 2015, I take 2014's price times 2015's quantity. 2014's price times 2015's quantity equals 7,200. 2016, 2014's price times 2016's quantity plus 2014's price times 2016's quantity. Why am I doing that? Why am I using the base year? Well, that's how we find the real GDP. The real GDP. Earlier we did the nominal GDP. How do you find the real GDP? You use the base year, base price for the base year, times the quantities in each, each year, to get you the real GDP. The real GDP includes the inflation rate. So, uh, the nominal does not. So if we look at the comparison between the real and the nominal rate, the nominal rate, 37.5%, 30.9%. Looking at the real GDP rates, 20%, 16.7%. .7. So in comparing the two, the nominal GDP is measured using the current prices, then current prices. And the real GDP is measured using constant prices from the base year. So when you calculate real GDP, you need to use the base price from the base year times the quantity, whatever quantity it is for that respective year. And then the nominal is just simply price time quantity. And looking at the differences in GDP, we realize that the GDP would change if the prices were constant. As if there was no inflation, right? So real D GDP is corrected for the inflation, which is why... Uh, most economists will, will, would, would typically always use real GDP when measuring um, gross domestic product. We use this thing called a GD, GDP deflator, which is a measure of the overall uh, levels and pricing. Basically what it does is it measures the current level of the price relative to the base year. This keeps it deflated, right? That, that's why we saw in the, uh, the real GDP, uh, the percentages were less than nominal. Uh, 
uh, with respect to year-to-year -year changes. And the reason for that is because we factored in inflation. And that's at, so it technically deflates the GDP percentage for each year. Uh, and why do we do that? Because we take, we're ta it's basically a way of us taking into consideration the inflation rate. And it's nominal GDP divided by real GDP times 100 gives you your GDP deflator rate. How do we compute the inflation rate? Or how is it calculated? We take the percentage increase in GDP deflator from year from one year to the next. So if I use my base year is a hundred. Twenty fourteen is my base year. Okay. So nominal divided by real six thousand six thousand. It's my base year. Twenty fifteen my nominal divided by real got me uh, times 100, gets me 114.6. 2016, nominal divided by real gets me 128.6. Looking at the uh, change in GDP from year to year, 14.6, 12.2. We can you can see now that uh, the, and the, this is the reason why they call it a deflator, right? The, those percentages are substantially lower than when just using real GDP, and that's to, of course, to account for inflation. Okay, so twenty fourteen your base year, good A, good B, price times quantity, price times quantity. You do the same thing for 15, same thing for 16. Uh, and then, of course, you add the two together. Price times quantity, price times quantity. Uh, oops, sorry, I want to roll too fast there. But it, it follows the same example, same example that we explored. It's just displayed a little bit different. But uh, so we compute, uh, price times quantity plus price times quantity for good A, good B. 46,200 for 2014, that's nominal. Then the real GDP for 15, uh, we take the base from 14 and the base from 14 times the quantity from 15, quantity from 15, 50,000 for 2015. To find the, the GDP inflator, uh, deflator for 2016, you take your nominal, divided by your real times 100. 58,300 divided by 52,000 is 112.1%. How does GDP reflect an economics, uh, the, uh, the well-being of an economy, right? We take GDP into consideration per capita, which is the indicator of a person's average standard of living. Of course, the higher, uh, I could be considered better. GDP is definitely not perfect. Uh, it has its drawbacks, right? It's, it's, it's frequently used. It's used by pretty much everyone uh, around the world as a measure of a, of a country's overall power, overall economic wealth. But it's it's not it's definitely not perfect because there are instances where a gross domestic product does not follow the health trends of the nation. Uh, they don't fall like GDP doesn't include things like literacy rates or uh, ability to do math or um, the overall well-being of the citizens as a result of their health. Uh, it it takes those things out of being factors, right? We're all, we're looking at. Um, Gross domestic product is a reflection of labor, of uh, property, plant, and equipment, of production, but it really doesn't take into consideration other factors. And so that's one of the, the detriments of, of gross domestic product. It doesn't take into consideration things like the quality of environment, time off from work, uh, child care, um, 
it, it does not con take into consideration distribution of income uh, that's equitable. So without taking those things into consideration, uh, GDP is, it's good, but it's not as most accurate as it could be. Countries that have larger GDPs tend to have better schools, cleaner environment, better health care, et cetera. Uh, and that's, that's pretty true. It's indicative of, of the world as a whole. So if we look at the world, right, and this is, a, the data is a little old, but it's still pretty darn close to what it is now. Uh, you can see the majority of the developing countries, Nigeria, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, China, Mexico, Indonesia, Russia. Uh, these are considered to be developing countries. Their, their economies are relatively young. They have a lot of growth potential, but uh, their country's um, economic conditions are closely correlated with their country's performance. So if if you look at the school systems in these countries, if you look at their health care, if you look at their overall treatment of their citizens, it's substantially different than it is in Japan, Germany, and the United States. Japan, Germany, and the United States have been leading the world as a whole with respect to GDP for, oh, probably the well, last 20 years at least. And... Um, the disparity is actually increasing. Uh, the poor countries are getting poorer. The richer countries are getting richer. That's that's how, that's really unfortunately how it works. But um, you know, that's that's the twelve countries really, and that the and you can see that uh, that how closely correlated it is with the amount of their their wealth in terms of the schooling, in terms of the healthcare system, so forth and so on. So it, it, the overall uh, satisfaction of living in those countries also ties into, into it. So GDP is not just a measure of <clears throat> the income and expenditure, but it can also be tied to those uh, factors like schooling and health care and so forth and so on. So uh, remember the spending components of government, which includes consumption, investment, government purchases, net exports. Those are that's the formula to calculate gross domestic product. Understand that the nominal gross domestic product is used by using current prices, and real GDP is used by using a base year, which is the first year, uh, you know, in terms of price. That's how we correlate the inflation. And uh, GDP is a factor of the, of the well-being of the economy, but it's not perfect. Questions, comments, concerns? You all still with me? No? You're yes, good. Dar Dario, you good? Yeah. All right. I have no to no questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, <clears throat> anything, anything at all? Any, anything at all? This is your time. You all good, really? Okay, well, that's fantastic. I, I feel good about that. Uh, I, I see most of you doing very well in the course. Um, for those of you who are not doing well in the course, you know who you are and you know what you need to do. Uh, the reason, the only time that you would ever not do well in this course is if you don't do the work. So it's very important that if you're missing something, you need to make sure that you get it submitted as soon as humanly possible. The other thing I'll say to that is your midterm exam is coming up next week. As a reminder, uh, yeah, I know, right? We're in week seven right now. So next week is week eight. And week eight is the middle of the term. <laughs> Hence the word midterm, right? So midterm exam. Uh, midterm exam will cover chapters one through 10. Uh, I currently have a due date set for October 17th. That may or may not change. Uh, depends on what the university says. But my understanding is that uh, as long as it's taken during that week, you should be fine. Um, that can and will not be accepted late. Can not be accepted late. So please make sure if you're missing anything, anything at all, submit it now. Uh, if you are behind for whatever reason, get caught up now. Uh, because midterm can and will not be accepted late. 
midterm covers chapters 1 through 10. Remember, on homework assignments and on quizzes, you have two attempts on homework assignments and quizzes. Please make sure you take advantage of those. The midterm exam can only be taken once, and it covers chapters 1 through 10. Okay? Comments, questions, concerns? You're all good. Okay. Well, uh, as always, thank you all so very much for your time today. I appreciate all of your hard work, everything you're doing. If you ever, ever, ever need anything, please feel free to call me, set up office hours, email, whatever it takes. I'm here for you 100% of the time. I appreciate all of you. Hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful night. And make sure to take care. Stay, stay safe. Wash your hands and do the right things. Thank you all so very much for your time. Appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful, Good. wonderful night. Good night, Dr. Good night. Appreciate you. Take care. Bye-bye.